Hi, I'm Norman Perolo, a furniture maker at Perolo Design and a woodworking educator at WoodSkills. And today I'll be demonstrating how to create a, uh, a mitered bridle joint. Now, if you've watched my previous videos, I delve into and demonstrate how to create a, a conventional bridle joint, which is fully square. And this is an example here. This is uh, exhaustively covered in, uh, in earlier videos. Another example. So, so there's a lot, plenty of coverage for, for gluing a gluing surface. And these type of joints, they're very strong and uh, they're really machine made, but I'm going to be demonstrating how to create the mitered bridle joint using uh, hand tools only. So that's, that's a conventional bridle joint, but this is the bridle joint, the mitered bridle joint I'll be demonstrating and discussing today. And this is, uh, these are the components. So this is the tenon component and this is the mortise component and they join together at 45 degrees. So this is uh, it's both decorative and uh, structural. It's functional, structural, strong, very strong joint, but very difficult to make precisely and accurately using hand tools for the most part. Uh, but I've devised a, uh, a system process to create them using hand tools, specifically a Japanese Ryoba saw and some uh, tenoning or miter jack saws. And I'll be demonstrating that. And here's some other examples. This is another example. So they fit fairly tight and it's just a matter of gluing them up. So I haven't, uh, I haven't really glued this one up. I haven't glued this one up yet and I haven't glued this one up either. So this is uh, another example of the uh, mitered bridle joint. Now this one I have, this is the actual one I'll be creating today and demonstrating the very detailed process of, uh, of creating this mitered uh, bridle joint. And this is the actual end result. So I've gone ahead and glued it up because it, I do need one glued up version. So you can see the, uh, the grain flow is, uh, is very aesthetically pleasing because it wraps around. And that's one of the features of the, uh, of the br miter bridle joint because it, uh, it utilizes the miter joint. So it's not an, ab an abrupt change of grain or a shift of grain from, uh, from a vertical to a horizontal surface as in a conventional bridle joint. So there, there is a little bit of uh, technique and process involved in creating this and I'll be demonstrating that today. And these are the tools I'll be using. These are, uh, this is a miter jack saw covered extensively in earlier videos. I'll be using that. I'll be using a couple of spacers for both the tenon and the mortise. These are tenons that work in conjunction with a specific three quarter inch uh, uh, thickness of uh, wood. This is the uh, Ryoba saw that I'll be using along with the miter jack saw that actually utilizes a Ryoba saw blade. And aside from that, it's just any very standard hand tools, a mallet, a hold fast to hold the wood down. Uh, I hope you enjoy this. It's quite detailed and you, uh, after having watched this, you should be able to go ahead and, uh, and practice on your own. So um, stay tuned and enjoy. Thank you. I'm Norm Perolo from Wood Skills, and I'd like to talk about a few woodworking books I've uh, written. My recent book is Quiet Woodworking in an Unquiet World. It talks about my movement to uh, hand tools from high tech to low tech, a woodworker's journey, which chronicles my journey from my former high tech career to my uh, current furniture making career. Along with that, I offer courses through woodskills.com. The courses range from a basic woodworking course right through to furniture design and a comprehensive design and making course. All books are available in both print and digital format. So today I'll be, uh, in this video, I'll be uh, demonstrating how to create this uh, mitered bridle joint. And this is a good example here. So there's two halves and they come together at a 45 degree angle. Uh, one is the uh, tenon, one portion is a tenon, and of course the mortise. Now they're actually created differently. This portion is solid. 45 degree lower part is solid and then this creates a tenon and this abuts against a, uh, a mortise. Now the technique to create the mortise is I create a, a complete square mortise. It's similar to the uh, earlier video I did on the, uh, on the, on the square uh, bridle joint and then I, I actually cut the 45 degree component and this allows me to, uh, to remove the waste from the, uh, 
from the mortise using chisels. By keeping that portion solid at 90 degrees, I have more more uh, wood to work with. Uh, with the, in the case of the chiseling, so I have more uh, more support for the uh, for the sides of the walls of the mortise while I'm chiseling. So I have more support using the, uh, the consisting of the sides of the mortise while I'm actually removing it away from uh, from the uh, from the mortise section. Now, if I had, had I cut this before. It would be a little more difficult to remove that waste. So because it's square, I can flip it over and use the uh, use the square component against the bench dog or against a tail vise. So that's uh, that's uh, that's a good point to remember when you're doing this. And then it comes all together. Then I just literally clean the uh, the bottom of the mortise out. There's some waste, and it just comes together, and uh, and that's the joint. So I'll be demonstrating. So. Just keeping this aside, I've got two blank boards here, similar in length, and uh, the first step is to ensure that they're uh, they're square. The ends are square. The ends that are going to be uh, used for the joint. So that's already been established, actually. So I mark the uh, the length of the tenon or the depth or length of the tenon using one board against the other, similar to what I did in my earlier video. So I use a uh, marking knife you can do this different ways I just use a marking knife I like a I only actually do one one face of the uh, board and then I use that to uh, to reference the rest of the board or the rest of the uh, the sides and the uh, Once I've established that mark, I can just carry it around. Now because it's a just a simple pencil marking, I can carry it right around and erase it afterwards. And that's what stops me from marking everything because then you're left with a uh, scribed mark that's a little more difficult to remove. So once I've done one component, I use the uh, the uh, uh, they're both dimensioned exactly the same. They're both three quarter inch thick by two and a half inches wide in this case for demonstration, but I use a standard thickness of three quarters just for this demonstration. So I use the second component to mark the uh, first one. So I have my hands against the back there just to uh, use it as a reference edge. Keep it square. Mark that off with a pencil line. And carry that around. So this is done. So we have a baseline. I call it a baseline for the uh, for the actual joint, and then I can work from there. So the uh, I'll get to the next step. So once I have the baselines uh, marked off and uh, penciled in. I actually uh, I worked the uh, the 45 degree components using a uh, in this case I'll use a Japanese square. So I'll just uh, to just to give you a for demonstration purposes I'll replicate the tenon portion and this would be uh, this would be my tenon portion. So I'll pencil that in. I don't really need to mark this with a marking uh, knife. I'll just pencil it in. And this, uh, I'll also mark off the waste part, and then I mark off the, uh, I flip the board around, mark off the back edge, or the back face, sorry. <laughs> so if you look at this component, <clears throat> this would be the waste part, and I'll just mark that off. I have a, I developed a habit of uh, marking off the waste just to avoid any uh, mistakes. I scribble the, uh, this will be the waste part. Okay. So, uh, so once we have the tenon portion marked off, we uh, will look at the, uh, the mortise portion. Now, the mortise portion again is I actually create a square mortise all around, and then uh, remove that 45 degree component, so I can mark that off now. So, if we look at uh, we look at this component. 
in this component. This actually slides into this, so we want so the uh, 45 degree component should be here, and then on this face. Now, in this case, this is uh, this will be the waist here. Now, this. This is the part of the 45 degree angle that I remove after having created the mortise. So the mortise is a 90 degree mortise right through and that makes everything easier because I have a square, a square board to work with when I'm uh, chiseling out the, uh, the mortise and you'll understand that better when I get to that point. So I don't need this anymore, the, uh, the original version, and I'll work with this. So the next, the next step would be to uh, to create, to delineate the, uh, the actual tendon and the mortise. Uh, because it's three quarters, it broken it down into thirds. So I have uh, two quarter inch shoulders and a quarter inch tenon, which fits into a quarter inch mortise. And there's a slight offset to allow for the, uh, for the kerf. And I'll, uh, I'll explain that just now. I've already set this up and I actually used the same setting for my earlier, in my earlier videos when I was creating the, uh, the full bridle joint. So it's marked off for exactly a quarter inch, which equates to one third of the uh, thickness of each of these boards. So in this case, I'll only mark off the, the this is the tenon board, and I'll only mark off the portion that I'm going to be removing because it's only, uh, this is solid. This is the tenon board, this part's solid. So I'll just give you an idea, I'll just mark this off. So because it's exactly three quarter inch thick and this is set exactly to quarter inch, it's equidistant from either face so I don't need to work from one face, I can just work from either face. I'll just uh, enhance the, or the mark with a pencil line. So because this is a tenon board, I'm going to be remo removing these two portions, these two uh, to allow for, uh, these two shoulders to allow for that quarter inch uh, and only for 45 degree portion of the uh, bridle joint. So I'll just mark off the uh, the parts of the waist. It's very good practice to mark off the waist even after you've had a considerable amount of experience creating this because it's so easy to make a mistake and get confused sometimes. So that's that board. You can actually start sawing that board. Now this is the, uh, the mortise component of the bridal joint the mitered bridle joint. And again, in this case, I need to, uh, because I'm going to be removing a complete square mortise, I need to outline the, uh, the mortise fully on, all, uh, on both edges and uh, the end. We're done with the uh, with the marking gauge. Just outline the marks, scribe the marks. So for all intents and purposes, that's done. So it's just a matter of uh, the next part of the uh, and this uh, part of the sequence is to start sawing, sawing away both the uh, the tenon portion, the shoulders, and the uh, and the mortise, sawing into the mortise. And I'll take that over to a different vise, a different uh, a different setup using the uh, the tenon ink saws or the miter jack saws that I've talked about extensively in my previous videos. To, to do this.
So I'm at the uh, <coughs> a different workbench now that I've already set up to, to actually begin sawing the into the tenon portion and the uh, and the mortise portion. I use Holdfast to to clamp the board down. They work exceptionally well and they're easy to set up. And I also uh, I'm going to be reusing these uh, these spacers that I developed for the uh, for both the tenon and the mortise portion. The, uh, these are precisely created with a slight offset and they're slightly different in thickness to allow for the, uh, the kerf of the, uh, of the Ryoba saw blade and the, uh, the saw blade itself is uh, incorporated into these miter jack saws that I uh, referred to or used extensively in my earlier videos and I demonstrate how I put them together and the features they have a pivoting blade so you can use either a a rip or a crosscut configuration and also set it up for left or right handed orientation. So I have two, I have two both a rip, uh, one set up for rip and one for crosscut. Now you don't necessarily have to have two, you can have one and just uh, and just pivot the blade either for crosscut or uh, rip orientation. So I begin, uh, and this is, uh, it has origins in uh, on a French design from the mid 1800s, and it hasn't become very popular in North America for I don't know what reason, but but it's uh, it's quite the tool and it uses the uh, the workbench surface as a reference surface to be able to establish the cut, and I'll I'll give a demonstration of that. So I actually established the cut using these saws, and then bring it back to another workbench, the other workbench, and extend the cuts down using a uh, Ryoba, a Japanese Ryoba saw and that allows me to have uh, very very precise accurate cuts right through straight cuts because they've already been established using a workbench surface so it's quite the uh, the instrument and I've created a few of these now and this is a ver and, uh, sorry this is the original version the uh, bolts are actually spaced a little closer but then I, I extended them further on this version so I'll be doing that next using these uh, again these spacers that I've developed. The, uh, they're slightly different in thickness. We're talking about half the curve of a Ryoba saw blade. This allows the uh, the fit of the tenon into the mortise uh, tight enough to be able to glue and uh, allow for the uh, long grain to long grain gluing surface. So uh, I'll begin to work on that. So I'll begin by preparing the, uh, I'll work on the, uh, on the, uh, the tenon board and the difference between the tenon board and the mortise board is that the tenon board is, uh, our component is uh, only, a, there's only a partial uh, shoulder removal, 45 degrees and this allows for this component to slide into the mortise component. So I'm actually only removing a portion of the uh, shoulder and then uh, so to, to perform this I'll be using the tenon spacer. And then I begin by uh, with my the cross cut version of the uh, miter jack or tenon saw and this allows me to begin the cut and then because if I use the uh, the rip version, it uh, sort of grabs wood, so I like, I prefer using a cross cut just to start the cut and then uh, progress from there to the, uh, the rip version of this saw. So again, this, uh, this saw, the, the premise is that it works with a spacer that is identical to the, uh, the thickness or the, uh, the height of the tenon that I'm going to be creating. It's already been established, so. Now, if you notice, I'm left-handed, so <laughs> well, it's, it's a little easier for me to... So I started the cut and I just, I'll just move over to the, uh, switch to the, uh, to the uh, rib configuration. So the goal here is to go as far as I could go using this uh, miter jack saw or tenoning saw and rip it as 
deep as I can go into the length of the tenon so it establishes a very straight cut because I'm using a workbench surface as a reference. I'm actually almost 70 to 80 percent there now. So then it's very, there's not much effort in actually extending that using a, a, just a plain Ryoba saw, Japanese Ryoba saw afterwards. And this guarantees uh, the, uh, the actual cut is very straight. It's almost foolproof. So I've done that. I release the board. Hold fast are released by tapping on the back of the hold fast. Clean workbench surface to, because it is, it, after all, it is a reference surface. So then I flip the board around and we work on the uh, on the other uh, side, the other shoulder. Now the other shoulder, I need to approach it a little differently because it's on the opposing side of the component. Back to the uh, crosscut version of the saw. Switch to the uh, rip version. You notice it slides right in to the kerf. And that's because the spacers are identical in thickness, both on this saw and this saw. And that's actually part of the uh, design. Very, very, very important to do it that way if you have two of these saws and you're, uh, you're alternating from one to the other. Well, that's done. That's as far as I could go. So I have the two cuts uh, established and you'll notice there are it is the full width of the tenon and a little more because we take a little more from the mortise component and that, that was that difference in the spacer thickness. So the next step in this case for this particular component is to extend those cuts at 45 degrees and then uh, remove and then cut the shoulders or cross cut the shoulders and I'll do that later but before doing that since I'm here I'm going to be uh, performing the same process on the mortise board and I'll replace the tenon spacer with the uh, with the mortise spacer to do that. So I'll start. In this case, again, it's a full it's a full cut, the full square mortise. We begin with that. practice here is to do a 45 degree cut on one side, 45 degree cut on the other side and then I remove the middle portion and this allows me to extend the kerf as far down as possible down the length of the tenon. Uh, that's what I'll be doing now. So I start to cut and then immediately switch over to the, uh, the rip version of that miter back shot. go into the uh, into the depth of the or length of the, the tenon. So if you actually work the hole fast a little differently you can go even further but you're always limited by this. And this allows me to, uh, to extend the, the kerf right down and uh, work the, the end of the board also. Now once I've done the 45 degree sides of uh, or edges and, and then and I can remove that middle portion. The goal is to go down as far as possible to maintain that straight straight cut because I'm using the workbench surface as a reference. And that's as far as I can go.
flip this around. Now, if you look at, if you actually look at the uh, the cuts, they're a little different in size, and that that allows for the uh, the spacers and the uh, so it fits really well. So I'll just flip this around. You notice the cut how straight it is already. So I'll just flip this around, clamp it down. Do the same cut here. this is uh, at the very least extend the cut as far down as possible into the length of the tenon to maintain that straight cut. Remove the middle portion. And that's done. I'll release this. how straight the cuts are and they're almost at I'd say 70 to 80 percent down into the, uh, the length of the tenon creates that straight cut that I've been referring to the, the goal of the uh, or the premise of the whole operation of using these mortar jack saws so it's almost foolproof and you'll get a straight cut within the actual mortise so again the premise is to create that straight cut and that's the the, uh, the advantage of using this system of using the workbench surface in conjunction with the uh, miter jack saws or tenony saws to create that straight, uh, perfectly straight kerf that I can extend easily using the Japanese uh, Ryoba saw later. So this is a uh, mortise and a tenon and uh, everything's marked off. So, so I'll bring this over to a different uh, workbench and we'll, uh, we'll use a Japanese Ryoba saw to extend the curves. I'll start with the, uh, the tenon portion of the, uh, the miter bridle joint. So I just need to extend the, uh, the end and the edge down 45 degrees. So the cut's already been, for the most part, established. It's up to 80% of the cut or 75, 80% of the cut. The best uh, approach for this is to actually clamp the board in at 45 degrees so I can work both the end of the board and the edge of the board using the uh, Japanese Ryoba saw with the, uh, with the rip configuration. So the Ryoba saw means two-bladed saw, two sides. So one has a cross cut, one is a cross cut side and this is a rip side. So I'll just extend that down. If you notice the, uh, the tip of the uh, Royal Bus saw has a flat portion and this is with the exact thickness of the actual blade. So you can use this to determine if your cut's gone down 45 and I'll demonstrate that. So I start by... Now the reason I've clamped it in at 45 degrees, I can work both the end and the uh, and one edge on this on this tenon board. So I've cut the uh, one shoulder of the uh, tenon at 45 degrees. Now to determine if you reach bottom, I use that tip without the teeth. So it, actually use the thickness of the blade and I just slide it in there and I know I've hit the bottom just from doing that and it's a little clearer than actually sliding a tooth in and uh, the top is obviously in the right spot and also if you locate your saw horizontally you'll notice that it cuts straight through the saw. So I'm working the, uh, the other shoulder now the same process just so I'll use that tip again that technique to determine yes it's at the very bottom and it's just up to the baseline of the cut and also use this technique to determine if the cuts so that's done. So that delineated or 
the uh, the shoulder component that I need to remove for the uh, for the tenon, and uh, you can see how straight the cut is. So again, this uh, this tenon is a little fatter than the actual mortise, so so it's a little slide in. And I'll, I'll show that later once. So my, the next step with this board would be to, to remove the shoulder components uh, that are marked with the, the, the scribble with the waste uh, pencil marks and then uh, at 45 degrees. And I'll work the mortise component now. So again, the mortise component I work in the same, uh, using the same technique, 45, and then I flip the board over 45 and then I set it up horizontally to remove the uh, the middle portion. So because the cuts are established using the mutter jack saws, I just really need to extend them down to the baseline and to the end of the uh, now in this case, because it's a full it's a full square mortise. I can actually wrap around and start cutting the top of the. I don't really need to end at the uh, precisely at the corner of the uh, opposing edge and, and end of the board. So that's one side. You can use two hands to hold a uh, a Japanese rail saw, but I, it works well with one. It's a small. It's not the hardest of hardwoods I'm using for this demonstration. So then I simply flip this around. So you notice I've cut that portion and I just need to extend this portion now. to remove next so what we have we have sort of a, uh, a wedge like uh, or triangular portion sorry in the middle and this is sawn off and the, the other part of the triangle sawn off and then it's just a matter of removing that bottom part of the triangle right down to the baseline these parts or portions of the shoulder for this to uh, fit into. So the next part of the process to remove the shoulder components and to remove the weight from the mortise. I've got the two components here. This is uh, the tendon portion, uh, board and all I need to do is remove the shoulder, cut the shoulder 45 and these pop off and I've got established a tenon, but what I'll be doing now is chiseling out the uh, the waste part of the, uh, actually never marked it, but the waste part of the uh, mortise. So to perform that, I, I clamp clamp it down, and that's that's the reason I've kept everything square, so I can, I can use the actual uh, 
the full mortise or the square uh, portion of the mortise as a, as a reference against the workbench surface. So had I cut this at 45 degrees as a first step, I wouldn't have a reference surface anymore. This portion would be gone and that's totally makes it completely more difficult to, uh, to remove the waste of the, from the mortise. So I'll start with that. And all I use here is really a, a, a small mallet, a brass mallet and a, a, a 3 16 chisel or just a little bit over 3 16 and that allows me to work in that quarter inch uh, mortise with uh, just a little room for on either side without damaging the walls. So that's another reason for using uh, predetermined thicknesses of three quarters and uh, divided into three at quarter inch uh, sizes. And this is a tail vise system I've developed uh, a few years ago to use with my end vise. So it's an extension that just pops in or out. So I'll begin by, uh, by clamping the board down. I've got it clamped against the dog and it's pretty solid. So I'm only going to be going partially through or a little bit past halfway and then flipping the board over so I know there's no, no risk of damaging a workbench surface or anything. So to begin with, I uh, again, one of the reasons for marking off the baselines, I just cut lightly into the baseline. And then I create a sort of a relief cut. And the relief cut will keep the, uh, the first cut from going further down into the, past the baseline. And this is the beginning of the, uh, of the waste removal. And I just deepen that cut in the same portion. Okay, and I deepen it again just lightly. Now, and once I've done that, I could pop off the uh, waste. Not, not to get too aggressive with removing the waste, so I just... And that's an example, there's an idea. The idea is to remove, uh, just go through and remove segments of the waste. So it's uh, very efficient and it, so it's essentially uh, the process of going systematically through and removing chunks like that. Now I have uh, attempted this type of cut using a coping saw and that's a more common technique of removing that waste, but I much prefer this process. It's cleaner and it's actually easier. <laughs> So once I've done that, I just continue and deepen the uh, keep cutting into the mortise once. Again, just, uh, have patience when you're doing this and do it. Don't get too aggressive and do it slowly. Although it doesn't take too long actually. So it makes for a cleaner cut because I'm always referencing against the, uh, the bottom of the mortise using the flat surface uh, the back of the chisel. So there isn't much cleanup to do afterwards. So as long as you're not too aggressive with the uh, removal of waste, it's, it works really well, the process. So I, I would say I'm at 30%. Uh, I think I'm at 40% now.
I think I'll stop there for this side and then flip the board over. So you notice how clean that is already. <laughs> Again, mark the, uh, I'm just creating a relief cut using the baseline. It's a very good uh, joint to be able to, uh, to uh, work on your uh, chiseling techniques and sawing techniques. of the waste now. Okay, that's not going to work anymore. Well, that's done mostly for the most part and I just need to uh, remove this sliver of waste. Here. So everything is done here. The only step left to do is uh, to uh, clean, clean the bottom of the mortise and I'll be doing that at a different vise. You can do it by hand, but it's kind of dangerous. I don't like freehanding this sort of thing with a chisel. I much prefer clamping the board down and doing it accurately. And I'll demonstrate that next. So I'm at a different, I'm at my face vise now and I just clamped the board down. So I'll use this, uh, it's clamped and it's a little safer to use. I try to uh, determine if the, uh, if the actual mortise is... Uh, the mortise needs to be cleaned up. And I'll be using that same chisel with the same mallet to remove the waste. So the, uh, the good technique is to approach it from one side and then flip the board around and work the other side so you don't have any blowout on on the opposite side while you're doing the chiseling. You can see I have a center portion that I need to remove on one side. So it's much safer to have your board clamped in and you don't have to have a hand holding the board with the danger of the, uh, the, the chisel tip entering your hand. So, that's, so it's just a matter of going through and cleaning this up and uh, it's getting better. Again, it's a, uh, a matter of cleaning it out and, and uh, determining uh, or establishing the, uh, the baseline and ensuring that it's flat. But I won't continue with this because I need to work the, uh, uh, you know, cut this part off and then work the, uh, the tenon board with the waste here. So that's the next step. And I'll, uh, I'll bring this over and I'll be using a, uh, a miter jack to perform this step. And I've just talked extensively uh, about the miter jack in my earlier previous videos on how to use it to accurately or precisely mark off the, uh, the shoulders so they're both in the same plane, uh, both the uh, mortise and the uh, tenon portion of the board. So I've, used, I've been using the miter jack extensively for this application. So I've set up the uh, miter jack and just uh, refresh. For those that haven't watched my earlier videos, I have it set up with a 45 degree block and it just clamps into 
either an end vise or a face vise. It allows 45 or 90 degree cuts perfectly because you're using both jaws a fixed and movable jaw as a reference along in conjunction with the, uh, the cross-cut version of the miter jack saw. So the miter jack saw was essentially developed to be used with a miter jack but you can use a workbench surface as a reference surface to, uh, to create the cuts as I've demonstrated earlier. So I'll, uh, I'll start with, uh, with the tenon and so I clamp it down. This uh, It's exactly 45 degrees although the surfaces are horizontal now. And this is a spacer block I've been using that is actually the same thickness as the uh, spacer on the actual uh, miter jack saw. So this allows me to mark off exactly where <coughs> the height of the uh, her baseline that I'll be cutting at. I'll just mark that off now. So what, <clears throat> what differentiates a miter jack saw from many other process of creating shoulders or cross-cutting the shoulders is that uh, both uh, jaws faces are in the same plane. So this is exactly the same on either side. So once I have this set, I just need to uh, move my saw around from one side to the other and then uh, without having to re-measure or uh, rearrange the board. So once it's set, it works well. And I'll just give an example of the uh, of how the cut works. So this is the, uh, the cross cut saw and this is the tenon portion. So I'll just be cutting into this. And it's important to have everything clamped down. <laughs> well that's one shoulder removed. And this uh, remainder uh, essentially, well, we, haven't, we can't really measure it, but it's a quarter inch. A little, little fatter than a quarter inch, a lot of the curve. And I need to remove this other shoulder now. Now, because, because of the camera angle and everything, I'll have to approach it from, uh, from the other side. Another shoulder removed. So we have a full tenon now at 45 degrees, and this is one component of the, uh, the mitered bridle joint. Just needs some little mm, cleaning up in the corner. And I, I, uh, I clean it up in the corner using a chisel so I can remove this from the miter jack saw. So, and next I'll be, uh, I'll be removing the uh, the shoulder components of the mortise board and using the same process I'll just clamp this down, use that spacer again Okay, so that's established and that's, I don't even need to measure this side because they're both the same. So I'm removing essentially one shoulder from each side and this is the mortise section. So I'll use the same saw. This is a 45 degree and I'll just measure that uh, using a protractor. So it's 45 degrees. And I can go a step further and use the uh, 
in Japanese square. Confirm it's 45. It's the perfect 45 and I almost don't need to measure the opposing side because they're both created on the same, using the same reference surface. I'll actually measure this one. So this is before even test fitting, just to confirm everything. I have cleaned up the shoulders, uh, sorry, the, uh, the corners and the shoulders a little bit. So I'm just quick chiseling. And uh, here's the test fit. So, so it goes, it goes together really well. Just a little extension I need to uh, shave off the actual uh, tenon itself and bring it flush with the, uh, the edge of the mortise board component. But uh, otherwise, great fitting joint. Now, if you look at it, it looks like it's straight off a machine or a table saw, but it's not, it's all hand done. So just a little more, a few more steps involved and a little more patience involved, but you can't create mortise and tenon joints, either straight mortise, square mortise, or bridle, bridle joints, either square bridle joints or, or 45 mitered, mitered bridle joints using, uh, using hand tools and for a, a exceptional precision using uh, Japanese uh, Japanese pole saws, in this case a Ryoba saw. So, so I'm very uh, satisfied with that. So I have a few more examples of these that I've created. These are the uh, small slivers left over. I'll just wrap this up with this joint then. So please subscribe to my YouTube woodworking channel where I share more of my woodworking techniques, my, uh, my woodworking philosophy, my thoughts on woodworking and uh, all the challenges I've experienced. And uh, I introduce some of the uh, new forms of woodworking I've discovered. And also visit uh, woodskills.com where I have a good selection of uh, my books, both in print and digital format on woodworking and uh, all my online courses and uh, I offer, also offer some woodworking plans. I have maintained a, uh, a regular blog on uh, what I've got going on in my workshop and uh, in woodworking in general. So enjoy!